Magandang hapon sa ating mga viewers dito sa Pilipinas and good afternoon to our viewers from other parts of the world. We hope everyone is doing well. Ako po si Mo Soriano, isa po sa mga advocates ng Union Bank Global Linger at nagahandal ng marketing and communications of Union Bank's corporate and SME team. Espesyal po itong araw to dahil may special guest tayo. Since the start of the expanded community quarantine, we have been working closely with a lot of communities. And this one, and this one is the most important partnership we have established since this is aligned with our goals to help small businesses. Kasama natin ngayong hapon ang isa sa mga trailblazers ng startup community, a seasoned entrepreneur, consultant, director of business and innovation at Ateneo de Manila University, and co-founder, investor of several ventures with expertise in digital tech startups, blockchain, e-commerce, business development, product development, digital marketing, e-learning in management and leadership roles. Ladies and gentlemen, may we call on our special guest, our co-host for this afternoon, Mr. Jason De La Rosa. Welcome to the program and salamat sa ating pagsuporta sa ating program. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much for, um, I'm very excited for being a moderator also of this uh, program. And thank, uh, hello dyan sa mga taga bounce back uh, members dyan na nanonood ngayon sa ating webinar. So if handa na kayo makinig, pakibigyan nga kami ng heart emoji sa comment section below. Ayan. <laughs> Ayan, tingnan natin kung ano, maraming nag-aano ko comment. Okay. So, Ayan na. So bago siguro ang lahat, maybe you can tell our viewers uh, what Bounce Back PH is all about. All right. So Bounce Back PH, if you're not a member of Bounce Back, it's a uh, it's a community that started uh, nung uh, nag-start yung quarantine, okay? Kasi nakita ko na kailangan ng tulong yung mga frontliners and also yung mga negosyo na nagsi-struggle dahil nga yung dahil sa crisis, di ba, hindi sila makapag-operate. So we decided to create a group that will help uh, them recover, endure the crisis. And uh, surprisingly, I was also surprised na grow na ngayon yung community. Now we are 165,000 members already. Imagine mo, these are all entrepreneurs, business people, professionals helping each other. Yan. So pag di pa kayo member, mag-member kayo. Bounce back PH. Fisha. Ayun. Alam mo naman na we're always here to support your initiatives as well as be part of the lives of our small business owners, partners. So today is June 22, Monday, and we're live from Union Bank Studios at the comfort of our homes. Uh, live din po tayo sa Zoom and Facebook para sa mga umabot sa Zoom registration. Makakatanggap kayo na certificate of attendance matapos ang session. And sa mga nanonood ngayon ng, uh, sa Zoom, no, pakisabi kung saan po location ninyo para malaman namin kung ano ang uh, pangangkop na content na maaari namin ibahagi sa inyo. Yan. Sige. Uh, this is a special opportunity for us, Jason, because since 2018, we have been at the service of SMEs in the country. Since uh, our niche is to be able to provide solutions, services, education tools, and access to a global network of SMEs that will help other business owners in the country, we are now over 300,000 SME users globally, and 45,000 of them are here in the Philippines. Uh, for those joining us for the first time, Union Bank Global Linker is a free digital platform that plays a central role in Union Bank's goal to empower MSMEs through different uh, business solutions. Sign up is free, kagaya sa Bounce Back PH. Uh, di rin kailangan ng Union Bank account and all you have to do is visit www.unionbankglobalinker.com or look for Bounce Back PH in, uh, in Facebook. Yeah. And sa araw na ito, let's talk about the best practices on accounting and tax handling. We know na important itong topic na to para sa ating mga viewers. So apart from nation building, we believe that it's our duty to help you ensure that you, you are guided with these topics. So inimbita tayo ng mga, nag-imbita tayo ng mga SMEs at experts uh, at sa, sa kanika nilang industry. Bago natin sila ipakilala, konting house rules lamang para sa mga nanood po ng Zoom ngayon. Okay. So nakikita niyo na po yung house rules natin sa screen. Uh, number one po, panatiling naka-mute 
ang iyong devices to give courtesy sa mga nagsasalita ngayon at sa mga nanonood. And number two, paki-type in ang mga katanungan sa Q&A section on Zoom, comments on FB. Okay. Uh, Q&A will take place after the talk. Number four, let's maintain a positive attitude and keep our minds open during the session. Number five, let's refrain from using profanity and vulgar words from the comment section. Yan. Yan ang ating mga house rules. Ayos. Uh, dapat peace lang lagi, no? Uh, kwentuhan yes. lang, masayang hapon lang. Uh, yes. Special din tong araw na to dahil officially din natin nilo-launch ang Project Luca para sa ating mga small business owners. Uh, to start off our program and tell more about this, may we call on our Head of Union Bank's SME Platforms and Development and SME Banking Expert in Finding the Right Solutions for our Bello Business Owners, our Vice President, Mr. J.P. Soliman. Hi, everyone. Hi, Good Jay. afternoon. Hi, Thank JP. you for... Hello, guys. Thank you for being here. Jason. Hello. Hi. Nice that you can also moderate for, for us today. Of course, anytime. Yeah, so uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, this June 22nd webinar as we promised in our uh, practical practices webinar session in Global Linker. We will be bringing you a lot more of these things na mas nakalinya at nakasigurado na dun sa kung ano kailangan natin. Uh, after this whole crisis has already settled. Ngayon, medyo napapansin ko, people are already starting to get back to work. Uh, people, I'm actually here in the office right now, so hindi nyo napapansin sa background ko kasi iba yung background ko, but I am in the office right now. And it seems like everything is just slowly getting back to normal. But to, to give an overview of what this all is, no, this project, Luca, and this webinar series, it all started with a message, a single message. One of our members in Global Linker sent me a message asking me for any referrals to an accountant or a bookkeeper or anyone that, who can help fix yung kanyang accounting system. Kasi malapit na yung tax season, malapit na yung June 15 deadline. And then there was another one who messaged me asking about advice how to manage bookkeeping and chart of accounts. Kasi she used to be a very small company and she's going to venture to do online and she doesn't know how to do it. She doesn't know anything about Iba ba yung bookkeeping for online sales? Iba yung bookkeeping for traditional sales? And she wanted to know and learn. And from, from those small email exchanges inside the platform, it became a thread. And then from those threads, it became a discussion. And now we will make it evolve a little further and we will make it into a digital forum. So today, this afternoon, we are officially launching Project Luca. Now, Project Luca is a response we have for all the members and the MSME communities need because they have a need for quick, reliable, and accessible information, quick, reliable consultations, and very much in the topics of accounting, again, taxation, bookkeeping, and even technology around, uh, around this, this whole accounting thing. If, later on, we have one speaker here who can talk about technology around it, and he has a lot of experiences about it. And why the name Project Luca? This was something that was being asked since I think last week kasi lumabas na sa Global Linker Project Luca. Uh, this is one of the contributions of one of our speakers, si Moses Pingad. And he mentioned that we can name it after this Franciscan friar and mathematician named Luca Pacioli. Now, Luca Pacioli is known to be the father of accounting. He, back in the 1449, he wrote a book about it. And now we give homage to him as we begin another evolution of how accounting is, we can now say that accounting is more collaborative and can work in the digital space. For this project, again, we partnered with two very reputable organizations. The first one is the PNA Grant Thornton. I'm sure everyone has heard of them. They're very well-known institution in accounting, audit, business process, outsourcing, name it. And they are a global, global brand. And next, we have partnered with MGP Accounting, where Moses belongs to. Who is, they, they pioneer so much in the new trends in digital and use of technology around accounting and accounting services. And they deeply promote the use of technology in the spirit of digital transformation for the SMEs. Now, Project Luca, as it is, is a full digital forum. It is free for everyone, whether you're a small company, a micro company, it nagsisimula pa lang, 
uh, nasa bahay lang, nagbe-bake lang ako ng mga, nagbe-bake ako ng ube pandesal o kaya cinnamon rolls. It's open for everyone. Anyone who needs to learn and understand, log in to our platform, Union Bank Global Linker. Like what Mo Reese said earlier, it's free. We are there. The partners are there. We will keep providing you the resources, the advisories, more webinars circling around different topics, and those are the promises that we have. Because we know that the 45,000 Filipino members we have now would grow later on. Kasi laki ng bounce back PH to 163,000 members strong. We know the things. Uh, you need to enable yourselves for the future. You need to prepare yourselves for the future. We will. We promise you to bring all of those enablements and to be there to help you prepare. We always say this. We strongly believe that the future starts with each and every SME. The future starts with you. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here with us, and I hope you have a learning field afternoon session with all our speakers today. Uh, I'd like to turn it back to you, Mo and Jason. Back, back to you guys. Thank you, Mo JP. Salamat sa napagandang talk mo. And uh, bigyan natin siya ng thumbs up sa comment section, guys. Thumbs up. Okay. Paalala lang to our viewers that if you have questions, you can type them in sa comment section on Facebook and chat naman sa Zoom. And we will select them later. Now, let's introduce our speakers for this afternoon. Okay. So for our first topic... Okay. For our first topic, combo special to. Dahil uh, nag-invite tayo ng mga partners natin mula sa PNA Grant Thornton. The first one is an A certified public accountant, CPA, and a lawyer, Veer, has been in public accounting since, since he passed the CPA licensure examination in October 1999, where he obtained the 16th highest overall rating. Veer conducts tax compliance and due diligence reviews, handles court of tax appeals uh, lit litigation ser support services, and provides advisory services on issues affecting individual and corporate taxpayers. And to join him, she has been with PNA since she started her professional career in 2006. She has gained extensive experience in providing tax compliance and due diligence audit and tax outsourcing services to local and multinational companies. She has also crafted tax studies and opinions for a number of clients. So ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Attorney Vier Asnar and Ms. Des Politado Aklan. Yan. Malakpakan natin. <laughs> Good afternoon, Des and Attorney Pierre. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mo. Thank you, Jason. Good afternoon. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Des, hi, Des. Hello, sir. Uh, oh, yeah. Kaya na bahala, ah. Uh, uh, marami yeah. na tayong viewers from Zoom and Facebook. Handang handa na sila makinig sa inyo. Sige. So, simulan ko na. Good afternoon. Uh oh. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Magandang hapon po. So I am Olivier Asnar, uh, and later on, si uh, Des ang magpapaliwanag ng second part. So we are from PNA Grand Thornton. Uh, hindi po kami taga BIR, ha? So we are business advisory firm, which aims to help businesses grow. So we are also all for growth. Baga, uh, despite this COVID pandemic, of course, we still aim to grow our businesses. So the picture that you see there is our CEO, Ms. Marivic Espanyo. And you may want to visit our website, which is flashed on the screen there below. Uh, next slide, please. So, taxation, best practices. Sabi nga nila, there are two things permanent in this world. I think, narinig nyo na to ng paulit-ulit. What are those two things? One, uh, one is death, and number two is tax. So, death hits, uh, death hits us once, Unfortunately, tax hits us many times. Well, of course, hindi ko naman tayo papipiliin. Ano bang mas gusto natin doon? Ano? So, in the Philippines, as you may know, we have a lot of taxes. And as you can see in the screen, that is on the national level. Uh, kindly click, please. So, we have uh, income tax, value-added tax, withholding tax, and others. So, we have a lot. Uh, marami po sila, no? national taxes. And, and the local government, next, please. 
on the local government taxes, we have the local business tax, the real property tax that are being imposed by the local government units. Next, please. So in the Philippines, we have what we call self-assessment system. So why do we say self-assessment? Oh, in the Philippine tax system, we have self-assessment because we are the ones, tayo mismo, yung nagko-compute and nagde-declare ng taxes natin to the government. And then subject na lang yan to, the future, uh, to a future audit. So it's self-assessment. Next. So in the presentation this afternoon, we will touch on national taxes covered by the BIR. And why do we want to be cautious about this? So is it because of our fear of a BIR audit? Uh, takot ba tayo? Or takot na takot? <laughs> Siguro sa dami ng news no? about uh, findings of the BIR, BIR assessments. As we know, when it comes to audit, the most popular agency in the government is the BIR. And the BIR has the power to audit and ascertain the correct amount of tax due from a taxpayer. As you may remember, earlier I mentioned about self-assessment. So we declare first our taxes and then they will audit after. So now, what are the penalties in case of a tax deficiency in a BIR audit? There, here they are. So penalties, ano, ano nga ba ito? So of course, oh yeah, nandiyan. basic deficiency taxes. Of course, if you do not pay income, in, pay income tax, then there's deficiency income tax. If you do not pay VAT, then there's a VAT deficiency tax. So this is the basic, the basic deficiency taxes. Second one is we have the surcharge. Yeah, it could be either 25% or 50%. Actually, one day late lang, ha? Huh? Uh, is 25% surcharge. I, I'm not sure. Have you filed your return on or before June 15? Ito lang nakaraang ITR filing. Kasi if you filed it on June 16, nako, uh, delikado. Kasi 25% agad yun na, na assessment uh, of the BAR. One, one day late is really subject to 25% of your basic. So imagine if you have 1 million uh, tax due and you filed it late, one day late. So easy 250,000 na exposure. Uh, okay, so what others? Uh, interest. So these are one of the penalties also. Interest is at 12% per year. And also compromise penalties. Next is com compromise penalties. Uh, this could range from there, 1,000 to 50,000 in lieu of criminal liability. There is a long list of, of penalties or violations here, and then there is a corresponding amount uh, for these compromise penalties. Next, please. So needless... Oh, okay. Yeah, next please. So needless to say, the BIR's eyes are really on us, taxpayers. So many of us could even say that the BIR would really widen its samples in its audits. Lalo na ngayon, no? given that we have this COVID-19 situation and our government needs funds. So baka most of us have, have the impression that, oh, baka nga i-widen yung audit. No? Of course, hindi naman kasi no audit ni BIR lahat. Eh. Of course, 100%. Across uh, the whole Philippines, they, they could not do that. Uh, normally, sampling lang yan, and they might increase the, sam the samples. Ano? So included in their program also is enforcement program is this BARs of Plan Candado. Uh, who are being penalized here ba? Uh, there. So uh, those that do not comply with the issuance of receipts there and the filing of returns, among others, so registration, there is a surveillance mga undercover watch, minsan minaman manan na yung business natin. So this is one of the enforcement program of the BIR. Next, please. And the BIR also has this rate program uh, run against tax evaders. Now, who are being penalized here? As the, as the program suggests, as the name of the program suggests, those who are deliberately under declaring its tax revenues, taxable revenues, or perhaps those who are falsifying their documents to make it appear that their expenses are substantial or substantiated for income tax purposes. So uh, having mentioned this, the penalties and consequences, it's really prudent for us taxpayers to counter all this by observing best the best practices. Next, please. Next, please. There. So in discussing the best practices, oops, sorry on the previous slide this year. So in discussing the best practices, there are also common sources of BIR compliance issues. So what are the com these common sources? Next slide, please. 
So there, these are the common sources of uh, issues. Uh, it can be grouped where personally I group this uh, like this. No, number one. Normally, san ba nanggagaling yung mali or uh, 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 errors or, uh, uh, or exposures? So number one here is analysis of transactions and computation of taxes. Number two here is documentations. Number three, administrative compliance. So yung kanina example ko about late filing, yan yung sa administrative compliance. Remember, ha, one day late is fatal. I mean, pecuniary wise talagang mabigat agad yun. So to address the issues and to avoid or mitigate possible tax exposures, well, I think, I believe that the first best practice that we should really consider is to have a mindset of compliance. I think it's important, no? that's the first of course, we're talking about best practices. So ano ba yung first best practice? We have to have a mindset of compliance. Of course, you, we might say, on oh, daming rules, there are difficulty, there are, there are a lot of rules really. But at least the mindset should be there. We, would, we want to try to comply with the tax rules. That's the first one. So here, uh, on the first group that I, uh, I showed earlier, so we have the analysis. This is one of the oh, no, no, source of common errors. No? The analysis of transactions and computation of taxes. So kindly click, please. There. So example for income tax. Their revenues should be reported in the proper period. Okay, related to this, in a BIR audit, normally the BIR compares a lot of things. Eh? I'm not sure, I'm sure some of you already had an experience with BIR audit, no? Normally, the approach there is the BIR compares a lot of things: amount per books versus amount per your income tax returns, amount per your in, uh, amount of your revenue uh, in the income tax returns versus amount per VAT returns. So these are all being compared. Of course, uh, you have to really reconcile all 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 these figures uh, uh, in preparation for a BIR audit. Now, here in number one, revenues should be reported in the proper period. If you are in an accrual method of a revenue recognition and you are selling goods, so selling goods, your sales per ITR and per VAT should generally be equal. On the other hand, if you are rendering services, your revenues, oh, again, rendering services, generally, your revenues per ITR and per VAT returns may not be equal. Why? Because your revenue per ITR is on an accrual basis, which means that you report your revenue even though you have not yet collected it if you're under the accrual method of accounting. While uh, for VAT purposes, if you are selling goods or selling services or rendering services, the timing of revenue there is upon receipt. So makikita mo, no, may pagkakaiba talaga sila. So what's the takeaway here? You should maintain a reconciliation schedule on how you will relate revenues per ITR versus per VAT. So that the BR doesn't have a chance to say to you na, oh, you have an under-declared revenue. Kasi remember, ha, in, in a BIR audit, different teams of examiners are assigned to you every year. Hindi yan yung year ngayon, siya rin yung next year, hindi ganon. That's why you have to be always ready on a per-taxable year basis. Another, uh, of course, a, a, a different issue is kung talagang we're not declaring revenue, ha, that's, that's really a problem. Here, as, as I mentioned, this is only a timing difference. But if you're really not declaring revenue, well, that is a you know, no, that's a bigger problem, and that could lead to ano, to a tax uh, tax evasion situation. So, there. Uh, that's another, That's one reminder. Number two, here I put here ensure that the prescribed conditions are met for expenses to be deductible for income tax purposes. One example of this was example. Uh, one example of this is. Uh, your uh, uh, long outstanding receivables. Normally, when you have long outstanding receivables under accounting rules or for bookkeeping purposes, you provide allowance, right? Uh, allowance for your doubtful accounts. Now, this provision is not yet a deductible expense for income tax purposes. So you will only be able to deduct this once the, the provision is already written off, meaning it's really worthless. Wala na, hindi na makolekta despite, uh, despite exerting diligent efforts. Yung, yung receivable mo talagang hindi na makolekta from, from, from your customer or from your clients. And that, at that time, yon you can already claim that as deductible expense. But not when you're still only putting there a provision. May pagkakaiba rin doon. Then this third one, as you can see here, this is very specific. 
revisit your representation expense and miscellaneous expense. Oh, miscellaneous expense accounts. Now, why? Why did I single out this, these two items? Well, these two items are normally being scrutinized in a DR audit because there are instances wherein, I think you know this, no? for those who have already encountered no? uh, BR audit, uh, because uh, in order, uh, sometimes there are instances wherein in order to increase the amount of expenses to reduce the taxable net income, there are taxpayers who lodge even their personal, quote unquote, personal expenses not connected with their company's business. Ano bang mga examples? Ano, may mga nalala ko, yung family groceries, I think, when I was a staff, no? when I was uh, examining books, or checking books, auditing books, uh, may mga family groceries, family reunion party expenses, nandun, uh, leisure, travel costs, and so on and so forth. Yun. Uh, and as an, uh, another reminder, no? when we talk about representation expense, there is a corresponding limit in the amount to be claimed as a representation expense uh, under the tax rules. So there are a lot pa, no? there are a lot of other conditions depending on the type of expenses. These are just blimps. I understand there will be a series of other webinars in the future that will cover all of these items. Next, please. Another example for value-added tax. There. So for value-added tax, uh, watch out for the VAT threshold. So what's the VAT threshold right now? Uh, perhaps you already know this. If you exceed what amount? It's exceeding 3 million pesos. So if you exceed the amount of 3 million pesos, you will, you will already be subjected to VAT. And you should register as a VAT taxpayer. And also, under the VAT rules, be attentive to the nature of purchases. As it is, it, uh, is it, uh, it is crucial in your input VAT, in the timing of input VAT recognition. So when you purchase goods, the relevant date is the date of invoice. So ano bang, ano bang problema pag hindi nyo natin na-follow to? Uh, yung input VAT ninyo, madidisallow yun. Remember, it's a tax asset. It's your tax asset. You, have, you, are, you are allowed to deduct your input VAT against your output VAT. Pero if you do not uh, recognize properly your input VAT, nako, sayang yun, parang tapon. So input VAT, the timing of recognition again, for, for input VAT recognition, for, for purchase of goods, the relevant date is the date of the invoice. If you purchase service, the date is the date of official receipts. How about importations? The date of payment prior to the release of goods. Next, please. Ah, ito pa, napaka-common, no? Uh, for withholding taxes, kindly click this. There. For withholding taxes, every day, in our everyday life, we encounter this, I suppose, in your businesses. Oh, number one here, check the long list of expenses subject to EWT with different rates. Yes, there is a really long list of expenses no, subject to EWT rates. Example, what's the rate for rental? It's 5%. Contractors, 2%. Professional fees, 5% or 10%, and so on and so forth. Marami siya, no? And you may want to visit Revenue Regulations 2 98 as amended by the train law and other issuances pa ng BIR. So, uh, you really have to, from time to time, you have to look at this list para hindi ka magkamali. Why? Because, number one, if you do not withhold, edi, you will have be subjected to uh, EWT deficiency. And there is also a possibility that the BIR will not allow your expenses to be deducted because you did not withhold this withholding tax, appropriate withholding tax. Well, of course, if you paid that in the audit and, the, and with the surcharge and penalties, then you will be allowed to, to, uh, to deduct your expenses. So there's a long list subject to EWT with different tax rates. Number two here, be cautious about a tax shield. Ito, I think narinig nyo na ito eh, maraming beses na eh. Meron ba talagang tax shield? in computing a compensation tax. When we say compensation tax, we talk about withholding tax and compensation. Sabi na, no? noon pa namin naririnig yan, tax shield, is it really a shield? Well, actually, there is a valid tax shield that we may call, and that is what we call de minimis benefits. It is provided under the rules. There's a list there. What are the examples of this? Like rice subsidy of 2,000 per month, laundry allowance of 300 pesos per month, uniform and clothing allowance of 6,000 per year. Yun yung mga kumbaga valid tax shield. Those are de minimis benefits that are not subject to withholding tax and compensation. Meron pa, marami pa doon na, na nakalagay. Pati medical benefits, meron doon. Uh, but if 
we're referring to, for example, additional allowance given to employees. Yung talaga binibigay mo na regularly, for example, transportation allowance. Uh, are these tax shield or are these de minimis benefits? No, they are not. Generally, they are not. Uh, unless it is really being used in the nature of the function of the employee, like a market, sales marketing representative that needs transportation or a gasoline allowance, or that's another story. But if you're just giving this to your employees, this transportation allowance, oh, that can be considered as a, an additional fixed compensation or even a variable allowance that you give to, to your additional variable allowance that you give to your employees, that could be construed as subject to withholding tax and compensation as long as it's not in the list of de minimis benefits. So that's a risk there. Also, number three here, reconcile the amounts per books versus per withholding tax return. And I included here the word ahead. So I, am, I would like to emphasize the word ahead because uh, wag na nating hintayin si BIR in the audit. I have encountered this a lot of times na yung mga taxpayers, nagre-reconcile lang sila ng amount per books versus per return. Remember, in filing with withhold, your withholding tax returns, there are a lot of groupings there of income payments. Uh, you uh, we suggest that you, I, I suggest that you make your own reconciliations even prior to the BR coming to you for a BR audit. Kasi talagang pag ito na, naabutan, immediately the BR will list this down as part of their uh, findings. And the burden of proof is always on the part of the taxpayers. So prepare ahead. So these uh, are the items under the group analysis, analysis of transactions and computation of taxes. Uh, I think I'll pause here and uh, turn you over to our next speaker. Thank you. Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Magandang hapon po. Okay, so thumbs up if you are still having a good time. Okay, so well, taxes po, no, medyo mabigat talaga siya. Um, yung word pa lang na tax, parang ayaw mo nang marinig, no? ayaw mo makita. But yeah, um, they said a person doesn't know how much he has to be thankful for unless he pay taxes. So until he pay taxes. So parang with, if you're paying huge amount of taxes, then you are blessed. Okay, so let's continue the discussion. Okay, so we're now on the um, second common BIR compliance issue. So it's now on documentation. I guess you may have experience with dealing with the BIR in case you've been audited. Palaging tanong ni BIR, ano yung support mo dito? Anong pansupport na mo dito? So for purposes of our discussion, we, we split our discussion on documentations. First, we'll discuss on the best practices on how you substantiate your revenue and, and your expenses. And then the, on the other side, we'll also discuss the substantiation for your tax assets, which are your creditable withholding taxes and your input taxes. So first, on substantiating your revenue, Okay, so what are the best practices? First, you have to ensure that the, that the revenue receipts reported in the ITR and VAT returns are supported with invoices or official receipts. So hindi lang po expenses, no, yung dapat may support tayo. Kailangan yung, yung rev, revenue that we declare in the ITR, which is normally kung corporation ka or individual, it's an accrual. So you have your invoices there to support na ito talaga lang yung amount na nabill ko sa clients and kita ko. For but purposes, nandun yung mga official receipts mo to support. Take for example, you're into you are a service company. So what you declared in your VAT returns are your collections. So to prove na ito lang po yung amount that I have collected from my customers and therefore na report ko sa VAT return, you have your official receipts. What else? Now, she, she may be aware, no, for list and other income or rental income, no, it may have different recognition method for income tax and financial reporting purposes. But then you have, you just have to remember for tax purposes, it's always the actual. Magkano ba talaga yung kinita mo? Yan dapat yung ma-declare mo sa return. So it's best that you should maintain copy of the contracts or agreements with your lessors or with your customers to prove na for tax purposes, this is the amount I've declared because it, this is what we have agreed per contract. All right. And next, um, our revenue are the income. Okay. Um, we all know you don't declare all your income in your income tax return. Okay. Why? 
because there are income which were already subjected to final withholding tax or capital gains tax. So a perfect example of this would be your interest income from bank deposits. Diba, he, kung yung kinecredit sa atin ng banko na interest income na, na napakalaki, no? uh, it's, uh, it, that's already net of the 20% final withholding tax. So given na bayad na yung tax on that, then you no longer have to declare it in your income tax return. So, but to prove that to the BIR, normally you, you do maintain BIR form 2306, which is the proof of withholding by the bank or if a certain income or gain from sale of um, capital asset or real property, which was subjected to capital gains tax, then you have your capital gains tax return to prove that the tax for that gain was already paid. Okay, next. Okay, we move on to substantiating the expense, which is the other side of our income statement. No? So specifically, the tax code is clear. No? For your deductions from, from gross income or commonly known as deductible expenses must be substantiated with um, sufficient evidence such as official receipts or other adequate records to support na the amount that you're claiming and to support the direct connection of that expense to your business. Sabi ni Surveyor kanina ni Attorney Vier, no? normally na mimix mo yung transaction mo, yung personal expense mo na mimix mo dun sa business expense. Mo. So, your receipts, which are named after your business or your, your registered business, should support na really these are business expenses, no? But yes, titingnan din yung nature, no? Baka naman kasi grocery or electricity natin sa bahay, charge natin sa business. So, even if nakapangalan yung sa business mo, hindi rin siya pwede. Okay. So, your common, common question here. Uh, or being you have raised to the BIR, are these support to deductible expenses limited to BIR registered official receipts or sales invoices? So what do you think? Baka sabihin nyo, oh, di ba sinabi mo may or, or, adequate, or other adequate records? Actually, yes, it's clear in the tax code, but if you'll ask the BIR, they will always say, no, ang support nyo lang dapat, BIR registered official receipts or sales invoices. But um, there are already court cases with decided otherwise. You can have your contracts with your suppliers as support for your deductible expenses. But yeah, um, the, B the BIR to encourage everyone to deal with registered suppliers, laging sinasabi nila, ang support lang natatanggapin namin, registered official receipts or sales invoices. What else? For next, please. Okay. Now, for... Certain expenses, there are specific documentary requirements to prove deductibility. So, anong example nito aside from those um, receipts and invoices? Like, for example, for donations, it must be supported with BIR form 2322. So, you, ngayong pandemic, di ba, ang daming nag-donate. Actually, ang kung mag, mag, magandang naging, nadulot no, yung pandemic, naging mabait, mas mabait yung mga tao. Okay, so there are a lot of donations. So medyo na-relax yung requirement for deductibility of donations during this pandemic. So pwede kang mag-donate sa hospital and then you just have to have deed of donation, the liquidation report, and the acknowledgement certificate. Now, another example would be for losses. Take for example, you have, your, your, you have in your books inventory losses. Okay, so it must be supported with certificate of inventory destruction. Now, another example of loss that you may claim in your, as deductible expense is your net operating loss carryover or null co. Okay. So, anong, ngayon, um, though it's, a, it's sad to tell, um, most of the, kadamiyan sa businesses will be reporting losses for this taxable year, no? So, but those losses, you may claim it as deduction in the succeeding three years. So, best practice, dapat nakadokumento yung null ko that you will claim in your annual ITR. So you'll report in your annual ITR for 2020 and then disclose it as well in your audited financial statements. Okay. Kung meron na mga utang na hindi na mabayaran sa inyo, then of course, what's your recourse? You just write it off. So you can deduct it as um, 
deductible expense, but you have to have proof of actual write-off and um, documents to prove that you've exerted all efforts to collect and yet hindi na talaga kayo nabayaran. Okay, next slide please. Now, we move on to substantiating your tax assets. So first on our, the list of tax assets, we have the creditable withholding tax. Actually, ito po yung tax that na binawas sa bayad sa inyo ng inyong mga customers. Okay. But those tax, you can claim it as tax credit in your income tax return. So you just have the best practice. Always ensure that it is supported with PIR form 2307. So yan po yung return natin. So what are the information? Yung watch out nyo. No? Yung TIN nyo dapat properly reflected in the certificate. The period covered is the period wherein you will claim it as tax credit. So for 2020 yan, dapat yung period that indicated in the certificate is 2020, okay? Or yung specific quarter in 2020. Of course, your pay is name, your name. So it must be your registered name, not your business name. Okay, and then it must be signed. Now, your question, how do we ensure na naisuhan kami ng 2307? Okay, you may opt na as a policy that you will own, that you will issue official receipts only upon issuance of CWT certificates by the customer. So parang mangyayari po, kaliwaan kayo. Okay? Next. Okay, and substantiation of tax assets, of course, is your input fat. Um, actually, this is the VAT that was passed on to you by your suppliers. So, ano bang gagawin mo doon? If you're a VAT registered taxpayer, so your sales may output tax ka din doon, no? So, but that output tax, hindi yun yung actual amount that you will remit to the BIR. Babawasan mo siya nung input VAT that was passed on to you by your suppliers. So, best practice, dapat properly supported. So, what are the supporting documents required? So, ito medyo strict po, no? Pag VAT, dapat um, kung ano yung sinabing document na support, yun lang ang pwede mong support One, so if you are purchasing goods, then it must be with sales invoice. Now, if it's a list of goods or purchases of services, must be supported with official receipts. And then, of course, di ba may VAT din on importations. You have to have um, this BOC form 236, okay, to support the actual VAT that you paid upon importation. Okay, so what are the um, information required and those um, documents? Next, please. Okay, so the listed here are the information required to be indicated in the sales invoice or official receipts that you should have to support your input. But again, your registered name. Again, reminder to everyone, ito po yung your registered name nyo, not the business name. So Green Archers instead of McDonald's. Okay, and then your registered business address, correct TN, business style, the date of transaction, which should be the period of claim. And then the amount of VAT as a separate item. Normally, pag inisuhan ka na resibo, kung anong amount yung binayad mo, yun yung amount na naka-reflect. But ipabreak mo yung amount. Dapat may sales, then ito yung VAT on that sales. Okay, best practice, you may encounter Okay, go, hey, go back please. Okay, you may encounter um, suppliers wherein mali yung resibong na-issue sa inyo. Okay, so to correct that, I think on previous slide please. Yeah, there. So to correct that, wag po kayo yung mag-correct. Let the suppliers do the correction. And then if you have employee reimbursements, ensure na you won't, you may make it as a policy that you will only reimburse the employee if properly supported yung employee reimbursements niya with sales invoice and official receipts. Okay, so that's for documentations. We move on to... Next, please, there. Administrative compliance. Well, for BIR for process, there's a long list, no? But you need to ensure compliance with those administrative requirements kasi posible ma-subject ma kayo sa tax compliance verification drive. Ano ba yun? Yun po yung tax mapping. Actually, it's part of the priority program of the BIR for calendar year 2020. Though, with this pandemic, no? I, I doubt kung pupunta talaga sila sa mga negosyo nyo and check 
but we do not know. Um, that's still part of their examination to ensure na makakolekta pa rin sila ng correct amount of taxes. So, you have to register your business, display the VIR certificate of registration, the registration fee, then the ask for receipt line. Doon sa kung saan kita agad pagpasok may VIR. Okay, then you issue receipts and invoices. If you're issuing receipts and invoices through POS or CRM, you have to ensure that those are registered with the VIR. And then you maintain books of accounts. You withhold taxes, as discussed by Servier. Then you file the necessary tax returns and pay taxes on time to avoid those hefty penalties that was discussed. Okay, so for this um, discussion, we'll focus on um, issuance of registered receipts and then the maintenance of books of accounts. Next, please. Okay, this was um, from the revenue regulation issued last year. Okay, binago yung as for receipt sign natin. No? So this is the form now. What I would just like to highlight here is the same. Sinasabi niya, sa lahat ng bibili, humingi kayo na resibo. But, so hindi mag issue na resibo, two to, two to four years imprisonment for non-issuance of invoice or receipt. So medyo mabigat. No? So nandun yung panakot. So parang pag nagbenta kayo, always ensure na mag-issue kayo na resibo, which should be BIR registered. Ano ba yung rules on the issuance of receipts? Next, please. Okay. So, under the train law, actually, lahat ng persons subject to tax must issue receipts. But um, it, it's required only for sales value at 100 pesos or more. But, um, yeah, I, I, I guess to, to complete the picture of your revenue or receipts, even at 100 pesos, you issue receipts, okay? And then, for all your other um, invoices, uh, credit memos, acknowledgement um, receipts, you have to ensure na registered siya with the VIR. Next, please. Okay, now, on the keeping of the books of accounts, okay, so there are actually three, three, three modes of maintaining books of accounts. You have your manual, your loose leaf, or your computerized, or yung tinatawag natin CAS. Okay, so where you, where you should keep it, ensure nyo, best practice, nandun po sa place of business. So, kung yung manual yung libro mo, binili mo sa National Bookstore, sinusulat-sulatan mo, ensure na yung mga libro mo yun nandun sa business mo, wala sa accountant. Okay? And it must be updated. So, what's prohibited? Can you click? Okay. You all know this. Bawal po ang mag-maintain ng dalawang libro. Um, I don't need to elaborate bakit bawal, no? For BIR purposes, what should be your um, what should what you should declare are your actual revenue? Okay, next please. Okay, to men uh, retention period. Okay, so pagkatapos ba ng taon, tapos ka na rin. Now you have to maintain your books of accounts for ten years and the other accounting records. But may yung hard copy. Um, you maintain it for the first five years. My option ka na pagkatapos ng five years, pwede ng electronic copy to save on warehousing costs. So you have to scan all your documents, then maintain an electronic copy of that. Okay, the next please. Okay, this is just um, the last topic for tax. So I would just like to touch on, I guess, medyo mainit ang ulo nyo dito. Okay, so this is the VIR issue once on their reminder to online sellers. Actually, it's really just a reminder, no? Pero nandun nga rin yung medyo, pag hindi ka nag-register, masasubject ka to penalties. So may panakot pa rin. But ano ba yung sinasabi? Um, it's the same rules as before. It, it reminds everyone to all persons doing business and earning income in any manner or form must register and pay taxes. Kung kumikita ka, magbayad ka ng tax. Ngayon, medyo lumuwag siya. Ang sinasabi niya, kung pwede ka ngayong mag-register, at walang kaming penalty ng impose sa yon but you do it only until July 31, 2020. pwede mo rin declare yung mga past transactions mo until July 31, 2020 and yung mga dennis kas namin penalties kanina hindi impose sa yon ng BIR. so how do you register? next slide please. okay just fill up the registration form, present government ID, submit the other documents just like your DTI registration. Pay the registration fee. I think it's 300 and 1,000 pesos to the BIR. And then from there, you secure your authority to print 
And then the VIR will now issue your certificate of registration. And there, you're a registered business now. So that ends our presentation for tax best practices and taxation. Mo? Okay, wow. Yeah. Ayos. Dami natin natutunan ng baon ngayon, Jason. I think, uh, I think meron tayong uh, ibang mga katanungan that we can reserve later. But um, I think you have a question that you mentioned to me earlier so that we can uh, summarize the, and wrap up the session for our first session. Ayan. Ito, madalas na tanong din to eh. Sa, kahit sa bounce back, tinatanong din to. So um, the question is, since we are in a COVID uh, pandemic, is there some sort of a ceasefire from possibly being audited by the BIR? Yan. Mga tanong. Who would like to answer? Hello? Can Hello? you can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yan, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Oo. Oh, yun nga, ano? Actually, nagkaroon ng ceasefire before, noong March, di ba? Noong March 16, nag-lockdown yan eh. Uh, nagkaroon siya ng ceasefire Dahil, of course, wala. Hindi pwede. Physical distancing, etc. So, kaya lang itong na-lift na yung GCQ. There was this recent VR order na we we take note of. Uh, mga June 8, uh, nire-resume na nila yung enforcement, unfortunately. Para naman akong bringer ng bad news, eh. <laughs> pero, <laughs> pero ganun, ano? Ganun yung order sa kalahin. I'm not sure lang talaga kung eto ay actually na yung mga field. Pero hindi, I mean, in our experience, meron ng mga tumatawag. I mean, yung mga examiners na naka-assign. Uh, for some of the companies, uh, tumatawag na sila, oh, anong status na? Uh, audit, ganyan. So may nag na. Uh, I'm just not sure how wide yung kanilang base sa ngayon. Pero again, ando na yung order na tutuli na. So hopefully pa rin tayo na hindi naman sana agad-agad, no? Na dahil nga physical distancing, pero siguro over the phone, puro inquiries-inquiries lang. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure hindi naman sila magagalit sa inyo, gaya nga nasabi nyo kanina. Kabay lamang kayo, hindi naman kayo yung taga-BIR. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, hindi po kami taga-BIR ah. <laughs> okay. Mamaya, pag may mga katanungan pa tayo sa kanila, maabutan natin sila sa roundtable discussion after our talks. All right. okay. So, maraming salamat sa ating mga partners na sina Tony Vier and Miss Des mula sa PNA Grand Thornton. Bigyan natin ng clap emoji sila sa comment section. Daming questions, no, Jason? So, mahaba-haba pa ang hapon natin. So, dahil dyan, dahil alam kong maray pang mga katanungan at maray pa tayong pag-uusapan mamaya, uh, for our last speaker, uh, he's the former chief accountant of Unitel Philippines. He was also part of the one of the top accounting firms in the country, uh, or Deloitte Philippines, where he gained uh, experience dealing with clients in various industries. He started his accounting practice back in 2010, and managed to form a general partnership. Currently, he heads MGP accountant, Accounting, which aims to change the business landscape in the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Mr. Moses Pingad from MGP Accounting. Hi, Moses. Hi. Gandang hapon sa'yo. So, Good afternoon. Without Good afternoon. further ado, Oh, Jason, uh, siya naman ang ano natin ngayon. Ang huling panauhin natin ngayong araw na to. Great. Sige. Sir okay. Moses. Take it away. Um, can you hear me, guys? Okay. Yeah. So, naka-unmute na ako. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. So, um, thank you, Mo. Thank you, Jason, uh, for that brief introduction. And uh, I was intently listening to Attorney Bier and Des on taxation. No? So actually, I, I'm also realizing that um, even though we're on the same industry, we're, bo uh, we're all CPAs coming to law, uh, taxation is really something dynamic. Um, it really changes every time. So it only means that we have to be uh, resilient. No? especially sa taxation kasi sabi nga ni Ms. Des kanina napakabigat nung ano nung, nung penalty no however 
uh, taxation kasi is uh, always enacted by laws eh. and alam naman natin um, ignorance of the law excuses no one diba? so we have to be really sensitive with that and thank you PNA for for starting off this discussion now um i'd like to uh, um share no uh so uh, how M msmes no can bounce back by using accounting effectively and all right so next slide please okay now a quick intro about mgp accounting um what we are we a, a we are a management consulting company that provides accounting services to SMEs in the Philippines. Now, now um, uh, we are on a mission to change the business landscape in the country by helping business owners realize that accounting is not just an expense, hindi lang siya gastos para sa atin, but it can also be a profit uh, center. It can bring money back to our businesses. And for SMEs, napaka importante nun, di ba? Because uh, most often than not, they, they see accounting or accountants or their bookkeepers as additional gastos. So that's, that's uh, one thing that we're doing quite different. Uh, we are making the, uh, the business owners realize that you can actually maximize on this service. So I'd like to start off by uh, giving practical tips. Yeah. So four qualities to be a recession-proof uh, business. Next slide, please. Okay. So like I said, um, uh, we're starting off with non-accounting attributes now. So we, we have four uh, attributes uh, to start off with opportunity and adversity, adversity maximize your resources, uh, being prepared, and of course, our attitude. Next. Okay. Now, um, opportunity and adversity. Uh, in MGP accounting, um, the team that works with us always hear this from me. Na, there's always um, a better way to do things. No? There's always a better way to say no, if you will. No? Especially now that we are in the, literally in the middle of um, challenging times. Now, the question is, as a business owner, how does your business suit the pandemic? Diba? How can you how can you adapt? Uh, a good example here is um, very timely. The online sellers you can see on Facebook, people are selling face masks, people are selling uh, gym equipment. Kasi sarado yung mga gym, no? For for those of you who work out there. And uh, recently, I I learned na another industry that is booming actually is plants. Because apparently, plants um, pro, uh, gives you a stress-free environment. So on the business front, that's that's one aspect that is being maximized currently. No, uh, selling plants. And now another question is: uh, Can your business even adapt? What does that mean? Um, I'd like to think that for the people right here in this webinar. Uh, uh, ilan na ba tayo? I think hundreds na yata ito, eh, no? um, We're very lucky that we are even able to do this. We're even able to uh, do a webinar. Um, kasi the fact is, uh, there are a lot of businesses out there that cannot even do what we're doing right now. That They, they cannot work from home. Diba? Tayo, we can. Eh. We can. Pero paano naman yung iba na they cannot? For example, um, resort. Or even restaurants. Although restaurants right now, ngayon, uh, pwede na mag-dine in at 30%, 50% um, capacity. In fact, yesterday I was uh, I visited a client in BGC. Um, quick plug. It's it's a Mediterranean restaurant called Noor in BGC. So if you're into Mediterranean food, you might want to visit them. Uh, that's one of my clients. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're now operating at 30, 50% capacity. Pero... Um, imagine during the lockdown, they're totally down to zero, diba? But again, um, uh, in, in, in the accounting industry, naman, luckily, uh, we are included as part two, uh, no, as, as part of the essentials in category two of the MGCQ guidelines. 
legal and accounting are part of the essentials of equal footing sa mga frontliners natin in the health industry. Yan. Now, another aspect is re-strategize. Um, kasi obviously, this is the best time to uh, be creative. No? Um, when, we, when we say re-strategize, you really need to sit down with your core people and uh, really assess your business. Um, how, how does it adjust? How does it adapt to the pandemic? And luckily, um, uh, uh, as, as being uh, one of the essentials, we are able to fastly adapt. And, okay, next. Okay. You have your manpower, location, and talent. Um, when we talk about money, obviously, this is fastly depleting, lalo na ngayon. Kasi as a business owner, talagang hirap tayo sa collection. Everybody is holding on to their cash. And maswerte nga kung meron tayong pangahawakan na cash. Eh. But again, for most uh, small, medium enterprises, paycheck to paycheck. Diba? They're not even... Um, able to reach yet the break-even point or the ROI. And that's the very case for most SMEs. But for those who are able to budget properly, uh, the, we really need to maximize and stretch where we put our money, you know, especially in these times. Manpower. Um, alam natin na um, uh, there has been layoffs and I think there are Currently, layoffs happening now in various industries uh, simply because um, talagang the business landscape is being challenged. No? And if you remember, uh, one of very evident in the uh, industry, Dole, at the start of the pandemic, um, released uh, a memorandum no, that they're, they're actually um, giving assistance to entrepreneurs. However, unfortunately, it, it, ano, hindi siya, it does it. Parang hindi siya kumasya, no? But again, for, for SMEs that still have now uh, mga staff that are working with you, uh, you really need to stretch them out and um, multitask. That's the best thing that we can do right now. Location. Uh, currently, uh, we are living in the digital world. Uh, in fact, um, we are able to sell no, as a business beyond a specific radius. However, the lockdown really limited us to within our cities. No? And with that, uh, it follows yung business natin talagang limited. So it's probably high time to uh, revisit your local market. What can you um, sell to your immediate uh, market within your specific radius? And then lastly, talent. What does this mean? What does this mean? Talent. Um, as entrepreneurs, uh, innate sa atin na uh, meron tayong talent to um, uh, create business. No? And that uh, business acumen is really most important, especially now that we are limited in all resources available sa atin right before the lockdown. So we really have to be creative and uh, juice out no, those creative um, Juices, if you will. Yeah. Next. Uh, preparedness. Um, in, in our company, we put a premium on planning, on being prepared. But uh, if, 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 if I'm talking to a business owner and an SMEs, I would tell that person to be prepared to accept and realize the current situation. Because I'm sure everybody already hears this. New normal, new normal. Pero what does that mean exactly? I mean, the government can define that for us, pero it means uh, differently for everybody, you know, for each one of us. But um, what's common, I think, is really accepting first na kailangan natin mag-adjust. And how fast can we adjust? That makes a lot of difference. And you need to decide na that your business will really change and adapt. Now, another um, aspect is, you, you need to trace your steps forward. Not backward, but forward. So uh, right now, we're literally at, at the middle of the year. It's probably high time you um, revisit your goals or your targets and your plans no? and um, put them into action. 
immediately or starting July 1. Uh, in fact, right now, um, me and my team were we're about to launch um, a kickoff by, by July 1. Because um, again, um, I, 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 I always thank the Lord for this. Luckily, we are in a good position to provide service to our clients, you know, being one of the essentials. Um, yeah, uh, next. And of course, uh, last non-accounting attribute is your attitude. Um, we always look at two point of views. You, you can either choose to blame, no? choose to blame or choose to adapt. And we choose the latter. We choose to adapt to the current situation and make uh, do with whatever we have, maximize whatever we have. Now, um, we, we come now to the accounting attributes. Next slide, please. So how can you, as a business owner, how can you bounce back? Next. So in MGP accounting, uh, our approach is we, we provide a proactive approach. Um, our strategy is we give information to our clients so that we allow the client to decide for themselves. And now having said that, uh, we implement a service framework for all our clients uh, focusing on these five aspects, information gathering, how to record data, tax compliance, which PNA was able to touch lightly earlier, financial reporting, and of course, the most important asset in a business, the people. Next. Now, data gathering. Um, we always tell our clients, our SME clients, um, you can actually summarize your uh, records into two main files. Sales file, number one, and expense file. Now, sales file, this is your money coming in. This is in the form of uh, official receipt booklet, collection receipts, no? So, if you can imagine, ito mga booklet na ito, uh, this will always be intact. Um, kasi meron tayong duplicate, meron tayong triplicate, pink copy, yellow copy, but all the same, it should be intact. Now, the next file is uh, pert pertaining to money going out or your expense files. These are your tape receipts. These are your check vouchers. These are your expense receipts. Uh, the expense files, unfortunately, are always loose. Iba iba yan. Iba ibang supplier, no? Iba ibang supplier. Unlike sa resibo natin, intact siya. Although iba iba yung client natin, pero you have a general file in the form of your booklet. In the expense file, what we do is we always um, tell our clients to uh, create a monthly expense folder so that at any given time, they're only looking at two main files, money going in, in your sales files, or money going out in your monthly expense folder. Next. Now, recording data. Uh, Ms. Des uh, earlier was able to share that in recording data or the books of accounts, um, there are, we are allowed three types of recording, manual, loose leaf, or BIR computer accounting software. Now, uh, what we do in MGP, um, we provide a standard way of service for our clients in such a way that um, location is not an issue because we focus on the second aspect, which is loose leaf accounting. Now, the manual, obviously, when you say manual, uh, ito yung physical books natin. So, uh, kami as a provider, we choose to do away with the manual kasi medyo masakit po sa kamay yun, yung mano-manong um, uh, magsulat. Now, uh, loose leaf uh, books and BIR CAS are similar in such a way that they are both um, electronic. But the main difference between loose leaf and BIR CAS is BIRCAS is required for some um, industry businesses. Like, for example, uh, lagi nyo nakikita yung may POS uh, sa mall, di ba? Yung sa food court or sa um, uh, pagdaga-shopping kayo, lagi may POS yon kung ano mang store yan. Um, obviously, pag may POS, it follows na nakakonekta yan to our BIR computer accounting software. But, at a minimum, uh, loose leaf accounting is, is still electronic, but 
Uh, wala namang talagang clear-cut software na nire-require si BIR as far as loosely if it's concerned. In fact, you can use your Excel. Pero what we do uh, in our company in MGP, we actually partnered with a, a cloud-based accounting software called Xero. Um, it's, a, it's an Australian-based uh, software, uh, but uh, in, in, in Asia, it's actually head office in Singapore. And at the same time, uh, we're lucky enough that the Philippine um, conduit, meaning the main guy who is bringing zero in the Philippines, is actually uh, working with us in MGP. So that's one aspect that we're really pushing because that's highly beneficial for SMEs like you guys. Yeah. But all the same, um, uh, we always make a standard that whenever we service a client, at the very least, we employ uh, loose leaf uh, books of accounts. Next, tax compliance. Uh, I heard attorney Vier uh, said a while ago that we need to have a mindset of compliance. And I completely agree with that. Because um, dealing with the SMEs, one common question that we get is Moses, should I file my taxes? Or can I file zero? Can I, pwede bang skip ko na lang? Diba? And of course, uh, we always um, say na we, we, we always operate na dapat doon tayo sa compliance. Diba? There's a reason why it's called tax compliance. Now, uh, we make our clients realize na there's a big difference between um, tax um, uh, avoidance and tax evasion. So again, uh, tax avoidance is legal tax evasion will get you in jail. Now, what we do uh, as a service provider, we try and analyze the business so that we can provide um, a roadmap, a tax planning, if you will, no? for the, especially for the SMEs. Kasi for the SMEs, napaka-importante nung cash flow. Eh, um, kaya, kaya lagi no overlook yung taxes kasi hindi nila nakikita yung importansya. Pero uh, we always bring them back to the premise na it's part of the business. No? Um, we may not, I'm not going political, but we may not agree to uh, how our taxes are utilized, but that's a different story. No? Uh, at least at the, uh, on the aspect of tax compliance, we are able to um, submit to our government. And next, financial reporting. Um, another highly neglected aspect of the business is your financial statements. At the very least, we provide to our clients um, uh, their balance sheet and their income statement. Now, um, siguro, I can imagine for the most of our audience here, meron tayong uh, basic accounting in college, diba? Kung matandaan nyo, balance sheet, it provides you your um, current position of your business, uh, how much is your net value no? at any given time or at a specific period, that's what your balance sheet provides. Now, your income statement or profit and loss, uh, what it uh, gives to you as an SME business owner, ang importante sa'yo, of course, your bottom line. Kumita ka ba or hindi? Now, um, like I said, it's one of the highly neglected aspects of the business kasi as a business owner, you're focused on selling, 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 which is understandable because kami, ganun din naman eh. Pero at the same time, we put a premium on this uh, financial reporting because it actually allows you, you know, it, your, your financial statements are your tools that you can use to give direction to your business. And that's why... Um, we always bring our clients back to the importance of the FS. Next. Uh, okay, the people. No, people. As much as we're talking about processes, compliances, your records, all of this will mean nothing if your people are not aligned. If your people are, are not being uh, maximized to their full potential, in fact, right now, um, maganda nga na uh, we, we are really um, realizing that um, working from home is very efficient at some level, no, at some extent. 
na um, imagine the, the 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 traffic time the travel time is cut to half or even zero pa nga pero all the same kasi what the government is telling us right now we are uh, being mandated to operate at 50% capacity work from home be flexible diba? but all the same all these uh, regulations are focused on our people and that's one aspect if not the most important aspect of your, your business that you need to consider and revisit now especially in these times of uh, pandemic because their safety or our safety is really the most important thing right now next please so um accounting taxes uh these are all highly technical um uh topics but the question is what what can it do for you what can accounting do for you It can provide you value, of course. It can provide you value by grounding you, by providing you a glimpse of the future, providing you confidence, and of course, pinaka importante, provides you cash. Now, next. What do we mean by uh, it grounds you? Um, your, your, your accounting, your financial statements, it gives you a picture of the now. Where are you right now? Right? Uh, how did your business perform as of today? And your financial statements are your best tools to tell you that, to tell you exactly that. Not your, uh, not your best friend, not your neighbor, not, not Facebook even. It's your financial statements. They're your best tool to provide you um, a picture of where you are right now. And also, it gives you a, uh, an indication of what happened yesterday? No, because your financial statement summarizes all transactions for a specific period. Usually, if we're talking about a whole year, it's 12 months. So, kung nag review tayo ng FS ng 2019, probably ngayon, kakatapos ng ITR natin, kasama sa attachment ng ITR, obviously, it's your financial statements. What happened? What happened to your um, business last year? No. Now, at the same time, your financial statements or your records it teaches you a lesson. Um, in, in, it teaches you a lesson in the way that uh, what were you successful in? What, what product or what service brought the most business for you for last year? Diba? Or at the same time, what product is not performing? What product do you need to let go? Or what product do you need to focus on to really bring in the business, especially in these times? Next. Now, when we say a glimpse of the future, we're actually uh, referring to forecasts, forecasts or future budgets. Again, you can only do this if you have your records correctly in your form of the financial statements. Notice I always go back to your financial statements to say, this is really the heart of your accounting. This is the result of your accounting for a specific period. But talking about forecasts, um, if uh, from your financial statements, it can provide you or you can create forecasts for the next 12 months, three years, five years, 10 years. No, you can set your goals. No, that's the beauty of having your financial statements. It gives you a picture of the now and it allows you the opportunity to take your business to the next level through numbers. Right? Uh, next. Yeah. So. Uh, we can all we can gain confidence in our business when we know what steps we need to do moving forward. No? Now, from the budget, of course, uh, the best thing you can do is to implement. Hindi naman pwede nag-budget lang tayo and then after that, wala na. Then what, di ba? So, we need to implement for the next, for the remainder of the year. It's very timely where it's, kumbaga, consider this webinar as your mid-year review diba? this is this is a free mid-year review from your service providers now it's really high time that we assess what steps you need to take from july 1 to december 31 and after that diba? from for 2021 for the next three years five years onwards and of course as you're implementing we also need to monitor no monitor meaning are you at par with your budget are you below or are you exceeding your budget? And of course, when you, when you conclude, you can now adjust. No? You can adjust your budget. Because it's possible that 
you can uh, encounter useful information later on down the road, which will allow you to adjust um, downward, upward for the better. Diba? Next. Of course, cash. So what, what do we mean by, by it can provide you cash? Um, in, in your financial statements, I'm referring to uh, at least uh, three accounts, three main accounts, sales, receivables, payables. Sales, because whenever we sell to a customer, we recognize that as our revenue, as our sales, whether it's service, whether it's good. Um, the, 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 the main objective of a CEO like you guys is really to make sure that there's sales coming in. Dalo na ngayon. And the account that, that handles that or that records that is literally the sales account or the revenue account. So in your profit and loss, you need to properly record that so you can monitor your sales account. Now, obviously, as you are selling something, you are selling because you bought something beforehand. And that, that provides you your payables, yung mga utang natin sa suppliers. Siyempre, hindi lang naman yung benta yung minomonitor natin. Uh, I-monitor din natin ano ba yung binabayar natin sa um, supplier. Baka nga, syempre, I can, I can understand na at this time you're, you're, wanting, you're wanting to defer no? or push back your payments to the time na talagang maluwag na yung cash flow natin. And lastly, receivables, if any. Kasi it's possible that you're giving... Um, you're giving or you, you were able to give uh, terms to your clients. And that's what we call accounts receivables or receivables. Um, we, right now in the pandemic, it's really common that uh, clients are having a hard time um, collecting from other clients because everybody's holding on to their cash. But all the same, this is an equally important account that you need to monitor so that you can convert into the cash. So, to summarize, this is your money coming, going in, in, in the form of your sales and receivables and money going out in the form of your payables. Diba? And all of this you can do if you have your records. Um, na maayos. Yeah. Next. Oh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, that's it for me. So um, if you have uh, other questions, um, Here's our contact number. You can find us on our website at www.mgpaccounting.com or you can send us an email at marketing at mgpaccounting.com. Um, Jason, um, Mo? Hi. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Moses. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Ayos. naman natin ng clap emoji. <laughs> clap emoji, oh. everyone. Oh. Oh, marami tayong natutunan ngayon hapon na to. So, uh, ikaw mo, anong mga importante uh, ng, uh, nangyari kanina, anong mga comment mo? Napaka, napakarami. Actually, uh, kung susumawahin, bottom line, uh, sabi nga kanina nila uh, mula kay Latorny Beer is that you need to be really familiar with, uh, with the types of taxes that you're going to pay as, as a business. Uh, kasi at the end of the day, especially during the pandemic uh, and, what, when, and what happened, uh, the BIR has their eyes on us. And uh, we need to make sure that we need to comply. And uh, ang pinaka-trust nun that they discussed, uh, especially coming from the second speaker, is about uh, why is it important for you to document uh, and make sure you maintain to be compliant. And uh, after that, you should, because at the end of the day, for SMEs and business owners, uh, ang burden of proof uh, is, remains with them na ma-prove na yung taxes that they pay is compliant and accurate. Of course, maraming questions along the way that we'll be addressing later on. Uh, ang pinakapayo lang nila is make sure to never mix your personal and your business uh, expenses. So maski naman sa life in general, never mo pinagsasabay ang mga bagay-bagay na personal sa, maski sa inyong trabaho. And uh, at the end of the day, pag may kailangan i-correct, Let's make sure that uh, your suppliers or your partners correct it. And uh, I like how uh, we went on to Moses kasi pinag-usapan niya yung different uh, strategies. Because at the end of the day, uh, paying taxes and uh, running your business is all about mindset. Uh, if you place your mind correctly and uh, if you're able to uh, be sure 
na kailangan nga natin tong kalawin and uh, because at the end of the day if you have good data and uh, since PIR is already open to various innovations then everything else will run smoothly. So it's a matter of playing it by the book and making it safe for you and for your business. Great, great summary. Thank you for, for that summary. And uh, totoo na lahat tayong mga SMEs and uh, small businesses, nakakalimutan natin ang uh, actually mag- uh, that is the least um, given importance in tax and accounting. Kaya this is really yeah. a most welcome webinar. And for those tuning in pa lang, so welcome to this webinar series hosted by Union Bank Global Linker and Bounce Back PH about the practical practices for accounting and tax filing for your business. So now, uh, can we call in our guest again to ask uh, some more questions? So nasa Q&A uh, portion na tayo. Oo, magkwentuhan mo tayo kasi ang daming <laughs> tanungan kanina eh. Diba? So oh, oh. At very engaged sa mga viewers natin ngayon. So, so mag-hi na, mag naman kayo sa mga viewers natin Hello. muna bago tayo magsimula. Loving fans! Hi, Game! Anong question, Game? Oh, sige, magkwentuhan na tayo. Magkwentuhan na tayo. Okay, Game. Game, oh, game, game. Pisaan na natin. Oh, go ahead, Pisaan Jason. Na Oh, oh, okay. okay. Question number one. Question number one. Okay. During the pandemic, uh, we were not able to issue ORs, official receipts. What can we do to, to ensure, still ensure compliance with invoicing requirements? Yeah. Okay. So I think I'll can I answer that? Yes. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, we, we do understand um, due to the lockdown, there are a lot of uh, businesses which are not able to issue receipts. Um, but the BIR, they understand that. So, issue sila na, I know, sorry, that's my kid. <laughs> new norm. That's the new normal. It's the new normal. It's the new normal. Uh, <laughs> asking me for purple. I, I lock up in my room, but yet, she, she still entered. Okay. Well, um, there, uh, there are alternatives, but you should have informed the BIR that you'll do issue um, not um, via your registered receipts because you'll just email, but there are work around procedures required. So, yun yung pwedeng ginawa nyo sana. So, yun nga, that applies lang until MECQ pa yung lugar nyo. Pero kung GCQ na, required ka pa rin na yung normal, mag-issue ka ng registered receipts and invoices. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you for that. Anyone would like to add? or um, Can I? Yeah, sure, sure. Sure. Okay. So the question was, uh, I, he or she was not able to issue receipts, no? Yes. The question is, why? why? Why were you not able to issue receipts? Because um, I'd like to think that you have full control over your official receipts, diba? Right? So uh, from, from an MSC point of view, um, if I'm hearing this question, my, my counter question is, why? And what's the intention, di ba? Deliberate ba yun na hindi ka nag-issue ng receipt? Kasi kung may, kung may collection naman tayong pumasok at hawak natin yung booklet, it's easy for us to issue receipts, no? But all the same, um, if, if circumstances really um, disallowed you to issue receipts, gaya na sabi ni Ms. Des, I think um, uh, given our unique situation right now, we have a leeway naman. No, we have a leeway to adjust. Uh, basta wag lang natin abusuhin. Diba? If that makes sense. Well, if I may add in, ha, re uh, reminder, uh, yung, yung, yung official receipts, remember, kanina sa discussion, crucial yan ha, kasi it could actually get you into jail. I mean, worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. Pag sinabi kasi hindi ka nag-issue ng resibo, ako, yun yung sinabi kanina ng penalty kanina na dinis in one of the discussions ni Des, andun siya. I mean by ano mm -hmm. by issue 1 mm -hmm. of the BIR. So ingat ingat po sa ganito. And tama rin yung sinabi nimo I, I agree din oo nga bakit nga ba hindi uh, because if you have control over over your records no dapat you can do this uh promptly and on a regular basis. Ako Ayun, wag na tayong dumagdag uh, sa mga <laughs> pagsubok natin. Wag tayo makulong in ng goal. <laughs> Oh, worst case naman yun. Worst case naman yun. <laughs> Tama yun. Para at least they can keep, on, keep, their, keep it in their minds. Okay. 
Sige, para sa pangalawang tanong, in line with pa rin sa pandemic, uh, ang tanong niya is, anong dapat niyang gawin or what should he do, he or she do, if uh, they have a hard time keeping the and keeping and filing the support documents for his or her business expenses. Hmm, okay. Sige ganito. Uh, of course, sabi niyo, may marami to eh, no? Maraming documents, marami. Uh, for, for income tax purposes kasi, uh, there is an option that is uh, allowed to a taxpayer. Pwede siya uh, what, an example is OSD, optional standard uh, what you call optional standard deduction. If you are a corporation, you can opt to claim an optional standard deduction of 40% of your gross profit. So, hindi na magmamatter ngayon kung ano yung masasubstantiate mo na itemized deduction. Kung baga, naka-fix na. Pwede ka, kunyari, you have a gross profit of 1 million. O times 40%, you already have a 400,000 deductible expense. Automatic na yun. Kapag OSD ang pinili mo, that's what you call optional standard deduction. So, it doesn't matter na kung ano yung mga substantiation na documents mo for your Uh, kung ang gagamitin mo sana is itemized. Yun lang, siyempre, kung itemized deduction sana, it could be higher than 400,000 sana yung deduction mo. No? Pwede mas mababa sana yung taxable income. Pero, uh, yun, kung wala nga ka, wala ka nga ang suporta, eh, edi pwede yun. Pero, that that option is, ano, ah, is available only at, in the first quarter of your taxable year. Hindi yan ginagawa as an afterthought. Kaya, first quarter filing of ITR is very important. And of course, still, yung sinasabi ko kanina is ano lang yun, no? kung talagang hindi, I mean, kung, kung uh, ano ba, parang impossible, pero dapat hindi siya impossible, eh. yung wala kang resibo, wala kang documents, dapat hindi eh. Pero sinasabi ko lang, because I'm just bringing it to the table na there is an option like that. Pero still, for best practice, you have to really maintain all these records kasi meron pang ibang taxes, withholding tax. So hindi lang sa income tax. So still, maintain documents. Uh, any, at any rate, binigay ko pa rin yung ano yung yung isang option na you have that you can choose that in your minds uh, of OSD or itemized that depends on your uh, ano no your, your own cost benefit analysis just may 8% pa no yung sa nakamit yata this yes yes there's another option um, provided qualify ka no so baka kineclick din na gamit yun na siya for example hindi ka naman nag-exceed ng 3 million yung gross receipts or revenue mo for the year Then, and hindi ka ba registered, then you may opt to pay just the 8% um, income tax. So your revenue times um, 8%. That will be already in lieu of your percentage tax. Diba? Yung 3% and your regular income tax. So yung isang option kung wala ang documentation of your expense. Okay. Uh, Maurice? Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, Maurice, can, can you repeat the question again? Sorry. Uh, ang tanong niya is anong dapat niyang gawin uh, during these difficult times na mahirap uh, mag-file at mag-keep ng supporting documents for business expenses. Okay. Uh, picking up from what Attorney Beer and Ms. Des said, um, the, the tax compliance is the result of your records. Pero uh, my advice would be to transition to the cloud. Uh, this is probably the best time to uh, maximize on available technology. Uh, whichever brand you're comfortable with, um, and dami namang available dyan. Pero if, if you are able to transition your records to the cloud, you can access your records in any device, whether it's a mobile phone, whether it's a tablet, whether it's your PC. And hindi na issue yung location. You just need uh, a device and your internet connection. No? What, pag, pag, what, when, once you do that, kasi, you're able to um, check off on your requirement of having your records in, uh, in, in, at par no, with the requirement of even the government. So um, this, is re- that, that, this is probably the best time to transition to the cloud. Uh, All right. Uh, if I may add then, ano, uh, uh, ano lang, ha, be, be uh, mindful lang na although we transfer to the cloud, of course, that's a good idea, no, yung Moses, no? transfer to the cloud, uh, we have to really maintain pa rin yung, ano, ha, yung source documents. Kasi for Correct. bad purposes, yeah, for rolling tax, for, kakailanganin yun. Eh. I mean, uh, yun na nga, no? mas, ma, mas ahead talaga yung technology versus the regulations. Eh. So, mm-hmm talagang hahanapin pa yan sa ngayon. No? Of course, we would like to see some developments din sa regulations para maka-at-par siya, makahabol siya sa technology. 
So, yun. May, may traditional part pa rin. Now, we have to keep the records. We have to keep the source Correct. documents. Yeah. Just a reminder right. lang. All right. Okay. Healthy mix. It's a healthy mix. Healthy yes, mix. yes, yes, yes. So, Thank guys, you. tandaan nyo na healthy mix of everything else. Okay. All right. <laughs> Siguro itong ano, medyo related to sa question kanina. Para kay Attorney, uh, uh, kay Attorney Vier. Okay. So, Attorney Vier, what is the possible penalty if we use delivery receipts instead of OR? Naku po. <laughs> I think yun yata yung sinabi na this kanina. Oo. Kasi dapat pag OR, syempre, remember na, yung worst case kanina, yun yung sinasabi natin. Pag hindi ka nag-i-issue ng BI registered OR, ang panakot doon, ilang ilang years yun, Des? Two? Two, four years ba? Two to four years. <laughs> Two to four years yung face on me. Oh, again, worst case scenario yun. Ha? Hindi naman siguro tayo huhulihin isa-isa ng lahat na ganyan. Pero again, uh, yun yung worst case. No? Pero uh, there is this uh, administrative penalty of 1,000 per offense. Nominal, napakalit lang. 1,000 pesos mm-hmm. per offense. Kung halimbawa, and maximum of 25,000 per year. Yun yung, so you're, you're, the, the question is about penalty. Eh, no? So uh, administrative penalty. And again, for compromise, may compromise penalties pa yan na naka-add. Uh, pero yung worst case, kaya insert yung, ano, yung imprisonment na. So, wag na natin paabutin doon. Oh, yeah. Anyway, sabi nga naman ni Mo, eh, ano naman eh, uh, you can control your records naman eh, in accounting, you can keep all this, you can keep this intact, you can do all this naman. Sa panagka-problema, isumbong kaya Tori Di Bier. Tingnan natin. Tingnan natin kung may remedies. Basta guys, ang, basta ang guys ang goal, bawal makulong. Yo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. So kung 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 nagmamaproblema kayo mag-leave ha, wag niyo nang iisipin nyo. Sabi niyo gusto ko mag-leave. Wag yung 2 to 4 years ha. Free body lodging 'yon. <laughs> ah, yes. Ah, uh, tama, tama. Uh, this next question is for uh, Moses. Uh, ang tatanungan ito is in line with technologies. Is there a shortcut to bookkeeping in line with the new normal? Yes, there is. Um, well, I, I can share what we actually do. Because kanina I, I, I touched slightly on our service framework. And we, we focus on four items. So number one is source documents, followed by books of accounts, tax, taxation, and your financial statements. So again, um, uh, source documents, books of accounts, taxation, financial statements. Our process, three out of four, we can already do in the cloud. And right now, even the first one, so four out of four, uh, we even uh, guide our clients to make sure that everything is scanned. But it doesn't mean na nakascan siya, we do away with physical. Kasi sabi nga ni Attorney Vier, yes. um, if you remember, di ba, uh, five years, first five years, hard copy. For second five years or the next five years, soft copy. But what we're doing kasi from day one pa lang, naka soft copy na lahat. But at the same time, um, in compliance with the first five years, we still managed to keep the uh, intact, the physical um, source documents. So again, source documents, books, taxes, FS. So currently, three out of four is already being done in the cloud. And the first aspect is simply A, man, a, a matter of uh, scanning everything. No? So that's why uh, w- once that is successful, we can actually have 100% compliance in your business have, having it transition in the cloud. Thank you for that. So, thank you. Thank you for that answer. So um, we have a question here from Ms. Des. Is there an income tax moratorium for SMEs? Moratorium. Well, oh, um, actually, um, during this pandemic, no, isa yun sa mga hinihingi ng mga SMEs or, and even other businesses. Hindi lang naman SMEs yung naapektuhan no, ng pandemic. But even the big businesses have been asking for the, um, for the government um, moratorium. But yeah, wala pa. Um, Ang initially, what is in the proposed tax reform, though proposed bill pa lang to, no? which hopefully by August ma-enact na, is yun nga, yung carryover lang po ng operating loss, which you may infer this year, you can carry it over for the next five years. So 
parang mm. hindi mo matatap. Kasi currently, three years pa lang siya eh. So, mm. pwede kasing next year, lugi ka pa rin, di ba? It can be, um, we do not know um, the outlook of, for the business. So, but yeah, yun, yung, yun lang yung isa pang um, what's in the proposals. But um, the others, ay wala pa po. Um, there are those, um, not income tax, pero may mga proposed bills on um, having loans to SMEs as far as an extension to sa bayan ni Henry Lasman Act natin. But um, yeah, nauna pa si Terrorism Act eh. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully the government will consider, no? So ibang usapan nyo, don't want to get into that, no? <laughs> okay, but yeah, na, yun yung nasa proposal. Thank you for that, Ms. Des. Uh, this next question is for Attorney Vier. Uh, gusto nilang magsangguni kasi uh, ang challenge po nila is uh, dahil nga kailangan nga na resibo for, our ex- uh, for expenses na tracking. Paano daw po yung mga nabibili sa palengke na walang resibo? Anong magandang remedyo doon? Uh, alam nyo yun na nga, no? remember before Ako, ang pangat na naman ng panggagalingan. Remember before, may interview sa isa former commissioner, tinatanong, pati ba yung mga nasa palengke dapat mag-issue ng resibo? Di ba may ganun dating, alam po, interview eh. Actually, sa tax code, sa batas natin, talagang required kahit yung mga sila. May, may limit eh. Dati, 25 pesos lang dapat magre-resibo ka na. Ngayon, tinaas na nga to eh. Right, this It's 100, 100 pesos. Oo, na, tinaas na. Pero again, ano kasi, ano kasi siya eh? Mandated by law. So ito yung pinasa sa kongreso natin ng mga binoto natin. So 100 pesos kinakailangan, may resibo talaga. So kung halimbawa mamimili tayo sa palengke at wala talagang resibo, ang ang, ang risk sa atin, we will not ano, we will not use that as a deduction kumbaga. If we compute our income tax, so we, we report our revenue, taxable revenue. Pero sa mga deductible expenses natin, hindi natin 'yan maiisasama kasi hindi natin siya masasubstantiate properly. Kasi pag sinama mo siya, you are being exposed to ano possible audit for ano income tax deficiency. So yun yung hit sa yo. So if you still risk na bibili ka sa palengke, walang resibo yan. Uh, ano yun? Wala wala, hindi mo deductible for, for on your side ay yung bumibili. Of course, yung yung isang issue doon, yung another point is doon sa dapat nag-issue nag-issue sana ng resibo. Another ano naman yun penalty. Pero doon sa bumili, non-deduct non-deductible expense. Yun ang uh, maaring maging resulta sa kanya. So yung dapat gawin talaga well ano best practice no talagang deal with ano deal with registered taxpayers uh, yun talaga kasi yung ano yung key item dun eh mm-hmm. um, if may, if may add to that no uh, okay. well it's a matter of uh, your risk appetite no yeah that's um i agree um this is um Sometimes kasi when you buy, I understand no real talk na lang. Minsan gusto mo doon bumili kasi mas mura doon even if mm. you're registered. What's the what's the take uh, um, the trade off there? You cannot deduct it as deductible expense. Pero oh, naka-save ka. So compare it with the um, amount that you save as um, difference in price, compare it with the possible tax exposure that you may have for having those, uh, for dealing those with, with those uh, unregistered suppliers. Actually, tama yun, no? if I may add, tama des, no? kasi uh, if ta- tayo mamimili, siguro do, do the mathematics, talaga bang nakasave? Yeah. <laughs> kasi uh, kung ang kapalit no, non-deductible expense that's uh, for, uh, na, na ma- makikiri sa income tax computation, do the math. Kasi baka hindi ka talaga nakatipid. Yun, mm-hmm. yun siguro yung pwedeng isipin. Magandang ano yun, ah, magandang takeaway yun. So, <laughs> ang compute ka sa natipid mo versus dun sa penalties na makukuha mo. Yeah. Yes. Noted. Very well noted. Yeah. Yeah, and more, um, I, if I just I may add to dun sa, I, I'm referring to the proposed tax reform now. So, I forgot the most, the highlights of, the, hi, the most highlighted of that is yung reduction in corporate income yeah, tax, yeah. which will be 25%. Um, hopefully, uh, mag-retro siya, effective July 1, 2020. But yeah, those are just proposals yet. We are yet to see kung aaktuhan ba ng ating mga mabubuting congressman at senator. Hey, thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. So our next question is for Moses. Uh, Mr. Moses, are you in? I'm back. Ay, Sorry, okay. that's what happens <laughs> when, when you're live. <laughs> okay. Um... 
Uh, this is related to your uh, answer kanina. So you're talking about uh, these documents in the cloud. No? So there's a question here. Can all of these processes and documents and everything be fully automated or can it only be partially automated? We are actually um, in the process of having it fully automated. Okay, firstly, let's define what fully automated means. Because um, the, uh, we, the last thing we want is to construe that term, that fully automated, na having to do nothing. Diba? Mm -hmm. Obviously, kailangan pa rin ng human involvement dito. Kasi those records cannot be put in the cloud if nobody will scan them. Diba? So in that sense, hindi siya fully mm -hmm. automated. When, when, when we say fully automated, um, uh, in our service framework, uh, again, three out of four is done in the cloud because we're working um, efficiently with uh, partner brands, with tools, no? with, with uh, cloud-based tools. Uh, for example, in, in, in providing our financial statements, we have um, zero to do that. What zero does it, is it captures the transactions on a more efficient manner. Now, wh when that happens, it can provide you your financial statements on a real-time basis. Diba? Hindi na tayo para maghintay ng closing. Every day, you can actually review your FS. So in that sense, it's automated. On the tax um, filing and compliance, we're, we're partnered with OneTax. I'm sure um, most of you know OneTax. It's also a Filipino brand. And... The good thing is um, Zero and OneTax, uh, we're partnering with them because with just one click of a button, you already know your tax exposure. Of course, you can still adjust, but um, that automates the process in the way, in a sense, na, um, it, it eliminates the guesswork no? in, in your financial statements and especially your taxation. Uh, so uh, was it, I, hope, I hope that answers the question of automation. Because automation yes, to you. us, no? automation to us means that we are limiting um, human interaction that are prone to errors. That's what we. That's what we understand by automation. Thank you for that. In terms of compliance and everything, it's being accepted already. No? Yes. Yes. It is. It is. Because yes. um, um, okay. with with, yeah. with with the accounting software that we're working with with zero. Um, it, it, it falls under the loose leaf books of accounts, which is, which is an accepted man manner of uh, uh, creating your books. With one tax, um, right now we have EBIR filing or EFPS. So it, it addresses the EBIR filing. Because with EFPS, you have a designated platform for that. Thing. That is uh, um, run by BIR. But for the okay. former, which is e EBAR, um, the partner brand, which is OneTax, addresses that. Great. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Uh, we're down to our last question. Pumaray pa po tayong questions. Uh, later on po, uh, shinare namin po sa link. Dahil hindi lang naman po itong ating channel para mag-usap. Meron po tayo sa ating Global Linker channel, sa Casa Bounce Back page channel. Dahil nilaunch po natin ngayong araw to ang Project Luca. So thank you po sa inyo mga katanungan. For our last question for today, uh, this is for Attorney Veer. Uh, and this is in the context for registered professionals who have also been insurance agents. The question is, uh, as, a, as a registered professional, uh, nag issue po ako ng resibo and yung age, a, insurance agency has been issuing 2307 for the commissions that they receive. Ang tanong po niya is, do they need to issue a receipt for this? using their receipts as a professional or just compile it in uh, 1701Q every time they issue the 2307? Uh, okay. To answer that, the so question is, pag issue ba siya ng receipt? The answer is yes. Okay. Oo. Kasi still, it's an income. Uh, an income that's received from another, although it's another line of uh, revenue stream, yung, yung commission, ano? but still, it's actually rendering service. Eh. Uh, service pa rin yun eh. So you are earning a fee uh, out, out of that and you should issue an official receipts. Yung kaninang question niya, should I just compile to 307? Uh, there, uh, you should really compile that. Ah. Uh, hindi, kumaga hindi siya option. 
you really have to compile that 2307 for you to be able to use that pag naggawa ka na ng annual ITR mo and then quarter din ay annual ITR mo so that you can have it deducted against your income tax due. So that's how we also guide yung mga, of course, we, we, when we assist taxpayers on this, oh, be, be very careful about your 2307. Kailangan nyo yan, dah dahil yan minus yan, pang minus na natin sa tax yan. So sa OR, yes, you should. And then sa so 2307, you should maintain that. See, so thank you for that. And uh, I guess meron pa tayo yata pahabo na question, Jason. Mo may pahabol lang ako kay ano. This is more of an, uh, I'm curious about this lang. Okay. Uh, Attorney Peter. What if uh, uh di ba ang dami ngayon sa online yung mga influencers na kumikita pero estudyante pa lang sila. I mean they're like below 18 yung iba, influencer na daw sila and they're making money out of the ads. So what's the BIR's take on on this? Uh Actually, no. Yung, yung sa specific na yun, I haven't heard pa uh, about this, no. Ang, ang, ang understanding ko, yung mga online sellers lang sa ngayon ang focus, eh. Tama, Des, no? Uh, oo, yung talagang, alam mo na, yung mga uh, that talagang regular on a regular basis. Of course, I we're aware merong mga, mga vloggers, di ba? Kumikita yeah, yun sa YouTube, yeah. right? Oo. I uh, haven't heard about, pero, pero kung titingnan mo siya, ano ba, quote-unquote by the book, uh, ang 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 BR kasi nakatingin yan sa taxable income ng taxpayer earning a taxable income. So kung may income talaga that is subject to tax, nako, malamang-lamang kasama yun sa kasama yun sa pwede na lang ma-masilip ma in the future. Pero again, again, by the rules, taxable income kasi is a taxable income. So if you earn it, you earn it, you have to report it to the BIR. Mm -hmm. Okay, even yeah. pag estudyante ka pa lang, ganun? Oo. Yeah. Wala lang age limit. Parang walang age limit, no? Parang walang age limit, no? So even a seven-year-old kid na sensei uh, na ano ba, trending oh, vlogger. Kasi kumikita na sila, eh, no? Kahit yung mga gano'n. Eh, no? so, kasi all oh, persons doing business. At, no, it's not hmm. really intentional, the business. Diba? But, uh, yeah, can I, as long can as I share kita, something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yes, yeah. I'd, I'd like to share something on that aspect, no, on the YouTube, on the bloggers. Because I think attorney would agree with me if I say that mm -hmm. um, our local agency, which is BR, naman, uh, only taxes us on income generated within the Philippines. Um, however, uh, being on YouTube, um, yung audience mo kasi is a um, world market, eh, diba? And technically, your checks are coming, abro coming from abroad, diba? So on, on a practical sense, um, there might be a legal loophole there, no? Simply because um, yung, yung jurisdiction ng ating taxation is within the Philippines. But on a on a case-to-case -case basis, because we have an actual scenario in MGP, one of our one of our marketing partners uh, actually has his own YouTube channel, and he used uh, he's he's um he's, he's actually Indonesian, um, but. Um, so my advice to him was, uh, since he was intending to profit from YouTube as a business, might as well register it. Because mm, yeah. if, if, if the intention is clear, naman, na your main source of income is YouTube, regardless if it's within the Philippines or worldwide, and you know for a fact na uh, medyo sizable yung income mo, might as well, diba? might as well um, be on the safe side. Kesa, oh magdadahilan pa tayo eh hindi naman eh bata pa naman ako eh hindi naman wala naman sa Philippines yan well that's a risk that you're going to take yeah. diba oh. clarify ko lang mo ha o, yung yung ano yung sa tax I uh, understand no pagka pagka ano ka foreign client ka foreign company ka yung taxation mo yung kung ano lang yung na-earn mo sa Philippines mm -hmm. ang problema diyan pag ikaw ay Filipino resident pagka ganun mm -hmm. we are taxed every, everywhere so everywhere. our mm -hmm. yes eh, uh, from uh, tax from the Philippines, tax from outside the Philippines. If you're a resident Filipino citizen, yun. worldwide. Ganun siya eh. <laughs> so, 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 can BIR look at your, let's say, they will look at your YouTube views? Or, kasi wala naman, may hmm. receive, wala naman resibo yung... Uh, we we uh, don't yeah. know pa talaga, ha? honestly, of course, we don't know pa how, how they will do this, no? Kasi, understand, mm -hmm. ngayon lang din naman nag-click yung mga vlogging, no? Na marami pala talagang, nagulat nga yeah. ako, may ano pala yan, eh, no? Depends sa million views. May kita pala Tama. talaga. <laughs> oh, so uh, hindi pa well, we, we uh, that that remains to be seen. We don't know pa sa regulators mm -hmm. how they Okay. Look into that. Thank you. Oh, Thank you so much. That, 
So Jason, dahil hindi pa tayo, well ako, konti pa lang ang followers ko. So <laughs> hindi pa kailangan, hindi pa kailangan ng ano. <laughs> dahil hindi ko pa naman malapit na mo. Hindi ko pa lang pinakakitaan 'yon. So well noted. Thank you for that advice, uh, Tony Pierre. So I guess So I guess to close that and in line with that question, isang interesting uh, question that we'd like to share. And uh, this is for uh Okay, Sir Moses Tao, uh, can you elaborate more on the difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance? And how come is tax avoidance is legal while the other is not? Yeah, to close our okay. session. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Eh? Um, well, tax avoidance, una -una, that's within our legal remedies. Because if we dig down in our um, uh, tax code, no? there are specific provisions that are allowed for us as taxpayers to maximize. So that's the, that's, that for me is the very definition of tax avoidance, meaning um, you're, you're simply maximizing what's already available legally. Diba? That's why the main difference between the two is avoidance is legal. And you are um, filing, you are operating within, within the bounds of the current taxation law. Tax evasion is something different in the sense that the intention is sinister. The intention is really to hide your income, to really um, not pay your taxes. So there's a very thin line, if you can imagine, which is the intention. The one is you're operating within what's available, right? and you're simply maximizing what's available. Tax evasion man, is willful neglect, willful um, not fi unfiling, if you will. Maybe attorney Ver would like to add. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sige. Sample na lang ng tax avoidance. Yung ano, mga de minimis benefits. Yung the one that I mentioned earlier. Yun, tax avoidance yun. Valid yun. Uh, kasi we're given naman yung mga uh, ano yun eh, uh, yun know, yung mga, mga allowances na allowed naman by the law na wag mong taxan. Th those are given. Like sabi, yun nga, yung rice subsidy. Uh, yun. Bigay, bigay mo sa empleyado mo instead of ano, instead of compensation na subject to compensation tax. So yun, uh, you have the option. Oh, avoidance din yun. Sparing ovation, again, as mentioned, by, may sinister intention ka kasi. Ayaw mong i-declare. So, yun. Ganun yung basic na pagkakaiba nila. Avoidance and evasion. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you sa ating mga panauhin. I guess, Jason, I think uh, it's time to wrap up this session. So, we'd like to, uh, to ask for final messages from everyone. So, maybe let's start with Ms. Des. Okay, um, yeah, so, well, it's, it, it has been repeatedly mentioned the uh, mindset of head, uh, compliance, no? So, to avoid future headaches and sleepless nights, ay ayaw mo naman at the end, makasuhan ka, and just remember na when you are blessed, you have to pay taxes as part of your corporate, uh, social responsibility, <laughs> no? So, yun lang, ang um, parting words. For Attorney Veer? Yeah, okay. So, three points. Number one, mind, mindset of compliance. Number two, prevention is better than cure. So, uh, your records, you have to keep them intact. Uh, prepare ahead. And then number three, if you're already sick, wala na, hindi mo na alam ang gagawin, okay, you can talk to us. Let's discuss. <laughs> Pag talaga, wala na. Eh. Usap tayo. <laughs> oh, usap tayo. Okay, ayun. Thank Ayan. you. Usap tayo. Mukhang may problema na ba? Thank you. Last kay Sir Moses. Yeah, so yeah, for me, um, please do not neglect your accounting. Please do not um, neglect your bookkeepers, your accountants. No? And take a proactive approach in your records. And accounting doesn't need to be an expense. It can actually generate more business for you. And we can help you with that. <laughs> yeah. In MGP Accounting, that's exactly what we do. We work closely with our clients. Yeah. Great. Great. Ayos. So, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat. So, sa mga viewers Thank natin, we... Yeah, we hope you learned something new today and uh, we'll see you in the next session. Magkakaroon pa tayo ng session, no, Mo? Yes, Marami yes, pa. marami pa. Oh, so Union Bank Global Linker and Bounce Back PH. 
So those who need help, please remember to go to Bounce Back PH Official on Facebook. Maraming makakatulong sa inyo. We're, marami tayong nagsastruggle ngayon, we know, but uh, when we work together, we will bounce back together. Yeah. And, and that's always true. Tulungan po kami lagi dito sa Bounce Back, Map, Mapa Bounce Back Man, Mapa Union Bank Global Linker because with us, uh, ang motto namin is we make your business dreams into a reality. So sign up now and join to Project Luca Group. So this is uh, Mo Soriano and Jason De La Rosa signing, signing off. off. Yes. Uh, so stay safe and bang from home to everyone. Ingat. Ingat kayo. Bye-bye.